We know all about the high-end PC experience for Black Myth Wukong, and we know all about the console experience as well, but what about achieving the best settings for high frame rates on mid-range GPUs? Today we'll be taking a look at optimized settings in Black Myth Wukong, and as always, our resident PC and optimized settings expert Alex Battaglia is joining me. Alex? Hey there, Oliver. Yes, I'm wearing my Black Myth Wukong tiara, which only <laughs> fits my head just by a little bit. And yes, I did take point here on editing. I have a lot of stuff up here, getting some additional footage. But Mohammed, uh, our DF contributor, contributed a whole lot of this, uh, getting a lot of the primary footage here. So thanks to him. And I would love to see some love for him in the comments, too, if you can. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into this, I think. Yes, Alex, I love the tiara myself. <laughs> well, it should be an interesting exploration of exactly how this game scales. And hopefully, hopefully, we can achieve a great looking image without too severe a visual compromise. So I guess the first place to start is with the game's full RT presentation, because I think that's the key area where PCs have a categorical edge over the PS5. So I imagine there's a lot of interest from viewers in scaling those full RT settings effectively, but that's actually a lot more difficult than scaling some of the game's regular settings. Yeah, basically, uh, I kind of want to argue that at least at this very point in time, I don't think there are good optimized settings for the full RT setting in the game, which goes from very high, medium, low, and then off. And the reason for that is just basically because there's an imbalance and or bugginess to the visuals uh, if you start adjusting this down from the very high setting. Uh, so let's look at this scene here where I'm comparing the difference between the game's diffuse global illumination on low, medium, and very high. And you'll see some good scaling there in performance on an RTX 4090 at 50%. And the scene looks relatively similar. That is because even the low setting is going to be doing uh, diffuse RTGI as well as the ray trace shadows. So it looks in like an average scene where there's not water on the ground or anything like that, it'll look very similar. Mm -hmm. And you'd think like, oh, I can run the game at lower medium here and that is fine. So let's look at this other GI scene here where I'm showing off the difference in specular GI. Now here's right. low, medium, and very high. And you'll see once again, that similar level of performance scaling, but medium full RT uh, along with reducing the resolution at which specular tracing is done also seems to have a roughness cutoff difference that is actually not noted by NVIDIA or developers. And as a result of that, you do lose some specular sheen, but that's similar to the game's base GI. So once again, you'd be thinking like, oh, this is perfectly viable to just go with medium. You're still getting mm -hmm. a better experience than the default presentation. But if you start looking at water and the game has a ton of water, you realize that you actually really shouldn't be using anything other than the very high setting. Take a look at this scene here in a swampy looking area. If you look at the water, you'll see that on the medium full RT setting, you're getting a big performance uplift there, but the reduced resolution tracing is actually being denoised improperly currently. And that means that it flickers a whole bunch. Uh, you're also not getting caustics in there, but that is less of a, I'd say, degradation in visual quality than the fact that it's constantly flickering, even at, you know, 4K output resolution. And I think that makes the medium setting currently untenable in spite of the performance win, just because there's so much water in this game. Uh, the low full RT setting, as we're seeing here, as well as in the other water comparison I've sent to you, Oliver, mm -hmm. you'll also see that they completely turn off specular tracing. And the only fallback structure for that is QMAPs. So you're getting a worse presentation actually than, on water at least, than the default version of the game, which uses SDF tracing apparently uh, for water out of SSR uh, when mm -hmm. the screen space stuff is not in view. So I would say the low and the medium settings currently have too many issues in terms of visuals. Uh, I think the low not having any tracing fallback at all beyond SSR makes it look worse than the default on water. Right. And the medium setting having so much flickering on water in spite of the performance uplift makes it not work currently. Now I imagine there could be some patching here considering Nvidia told us that they think the medium setting is broken currently. So maybe mm -hmm. medium would be a good middle ground in the future, but right now 
I don't think there's actually a good optimized setting for full RT other than maxing it. Yeah, yeah, I think the water example is kind of curious because it really does cost you a lot of image stability in that medium option. And like you said, with the low settings, it's like not really producing a, a, a <laughs> colorably good image there. You're not really getting that full RT experience, I'd argue, because you're really just getting that kind of diffuse lighting, that indirect diffuse lighting, not so much indirect specular, not so much, uh, mm -hmm. not so much the reflection. So yeah, I mean, it certainly does seem like the very highest end option here is the only way to go. But I think that full RT setting, I don't know, it's kind of intended for probably higher end rigs. And I think if you do want to go for that full RT experience that you should just embrace it, go all the way there. Um, perhaps they could have scaled quality a little bit more elegantly than kind of stripping things back so dramatically. But at the same time, right. I'm personally, I'm not that bothered for a setting that's kind of intended for the high end, but it is something maybe they could take a look at in the future patches. Yeah, I would personally love the ability for all the various features to be broken out into separate options. Yes, so absolutely. diffuse GI is one option, specular GI is another, um, caustics as another option and then shadows as another option. So then you would kind of pick and choose. Uh, this could lead to the strange situation though, where you mix different types of tracing, like the specular tracing that's right. done by the game by default. But that is something that I really think people should have a choice over rather than flat scaled options like this. Yes, Alex. So now that we've moved off of that full RT experience and we've perhaps explained <laughs> why it might not be the best choice if you have something like an RTX 3060. Uh, I think perhaps we should move on to optimize settings for the more mid-range class of GPU in the world that's not really going to be achieving those very top-end full RT settings. So I think right. probably here with respect to mid-range GPUs, we're probably looking at hardware that's starting at or maybe slightly below in that range with basically the premium console GPUs, so the PS5 and Series X, and probably extending to something like an RTX 4070 or something in that range, basically GPUs that are below the high end, basically in the market. So what kind of optimized settings do those kinds of systems need to actually have a really good experience in Black Myth Wukong, or at least as good of an experience as can be expected with the game at the moment? So like a lot of Unreal Engine 5 titles, I think you require small nips and tucks here and there to almost nearly every setting to actually get a good, get a good appreciation for this. There is a benchmark that ships with the game and they shipped it also as a separate EXE. But after having played the game for a bit, I don't think it actually gives a completely nuanced view of what the settings exactly do to different visual phenomena. Uh, it can give you a good sense of generic performance the game will have, but it doesn't show you actually what some of the degradations will be uh, mm -hmm. if you start adjusting things. Or it won't even show you the performance of every single thing. So you needed to play the game to get a better idea of that. And that's what Muhammad did, and I also did too on a different GPU. He did his testing on an RTX 3070, and I did mine primarily on an RTX 2070 Super. And there's some conclusions there, but I think I'm going to go straight into the individual settings first. And I'm going to kind of go from slightly least important to most important at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. The first thing that I checked out was post effects quality. And here, it, if you just like watch a cutscene play out, you actually won't notice the difference too much until you get down to very like the lowest setting. Uh, but if you stop and look, you'll see that uh, below high, uh, things like bloom are reduced and lens flares are turned off. Yes. But when you go from like cinematic to around high, you'll see that there is actually a slight degradation in depth of field quality, but it is actually extremely minor. Uh, as a result of that minor dip in quality, uh, I think the 4% win in performance I was able to see as measured by Mohammed here is a great win. So definitely use high for this setting. I was looking at these post effects pictures for depth of field and I was having a hell of a time trying to pick between them, even with still shots. So for <laughs> sure, it's not very much of an impact there. And yeah, I think PS5 is probably using a setting in line with the high settings preset, possibly very high, uh, I think here, because it does retain those light shafts. I think PS5 is probably something in that range. Yeah. And now another setting that I found uh, to be not so constant consequential is the texture quality setting. Uh, here, when you compare them side by side, just looking at the ground, for example, as we can see here, uh, on an RTX 3070, even outputting at 4K, um, you'll see that the quality only starts to get noticeably lower around high, but even then it's subtle, and then it gets uh, mm -hmm. more noticeable around medium and low. 
But uh, Mohammed playing the game here at even like the very higher cinematic quality where there's no discernible difference at all, um, it wasn't affecting performance at all. There wasn't extra induced hitching. Uh, and so here I just recommend the very high or cinematic quality. I, I think very high is completely the same. So I just used that when I was doing my testing. But here, uh, texture quality doesn't seem to be a big issue on an eight gigabyte GPU at all. And I wholly recommend everyone to just use like very high or so. Mm -hmm. So shadow quality. This is one of our first larger wins and I want to kind of get it out, out of the way first because I think the uh, visual consequences aren't so important. The game is using cascaded shadow maps as Oliver and I have talked on our respective videos. And when you get down to around high, as you can see the still image here, or sorry, this still camera footage here, uh, there is a slight degradation to the standing quality. But it, the thing is, it's already not very good anyway if you understand what I mean. So the, right. the it's already not great, but there are small degradation in quality. You're getting an 18% performance win there on high versus cinematic. And yes, as the camera moves forward, as you're seeing some of these other comparisons here, there is a slight difference in the kind of noticing of the cascade um, moving with the camera, but I think an 18% performance win versus slightly uh, more noticeable cascade transitions is worth it for anything that is, you know, this game's heavy enough as is, might as well try and get some performance out of it. So definitely use high for shadow quality here. Yeah, to me, none of the CSM settings are that exciting or particularly great looking. I think in part because of the aggressiveness of that closest shadow cascade, which actually reminds me of another game that came out earlier this year, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which also had a similar issue. I don't think it looks that great to me. Um, mm -hmm. And also because, not to spoil anything, but the game's foliage doesn't animate that much unless you engage some other settings a little bit higher. So you're not seeing too much of that shadow aliasing because there's just not that much movement in the shadow maps. Correct. Uh, speaking of vegetation, uh, vegetation quality here uh, on this side by side, you can see this is one area where the PS5 pruned, it looked like. And yes. I'd also recommend pruning this a bit too. On the high setting, uh, on an average view distance, uh, it didn't actually super affect the amount of vegetation you can see in terms of density, uh, but it had a nice 5% performance win there. Uh, and I think that's worth it. Going to medium or low, though, I feel like is a, a bridge too far, so I wouldn't recommend that. Now, there's another setting that affects vegetation, and that's the view distance quality. And since this game isn't using Nanite for its vegetation, this will affect the LOD distance scaling of that vegetation. So vegetation quality is affecting the density, while view distance quality is affecting how quickly they transition in terms of distance to a uh, a worse LOD. And here I found that there is a 2% performance win uh, by going to high, which I think it didn't look that different when moving uh, in a side-by-side. -side. Like as you can see here, the difference is small, so might as well get that performance win. Uh, but I said not to go any lower essentially because between medium and high, as you're seeing in this footage here, moving back and forth, there is a noticeable difference in how close to the camera the LOD transition will occur. And I, I found it just like, once again, a step too far on medium. Okay, so this is probably one of the largest visual differences and performance differences in the game, and this is from the visual effects quality setting. Now, on PS5, we did see that the game was degrading quality in the opening cinematic and that cinematic prologue area with regard to the really cool fluid volume fog particle system that's going on there. Yes. Really cool effect very expensive. Uh, so in a side by side, as I'm showing in the stills right here, um, if you go down to high, it's like 22% win in performance. Not so big of a degradation in quality, I would argue. Uh, that mm -hmm. could be a good win, but there's a 33% win by going down to medium. And on these GPUs, in the moments when this effect occurs, it is extremely expensive. Uh, the opening <laughs> intro, as we'll see later on, can be dropping even heavily on the medium setting. So this, this effect is used very, I wouldn't say sparsely throughout the game. It is definitely there quite often mm -hmm. enough. But I think it is worth it to go down to medium here in regards to performance for mid-range GPUs. Now, unfortunately, there is a side effect of going down to high or medium for this setting, uh, 
essentially when you're in any of the forested areas of the game. If you look up uh, at any of the larger trees, you'll notice that at the high setting and lower, they'll stop moving. Right. And I think this is a hard setting to balance as a result of that. Like I technically would like those trees to be moving. (laughs) They they're, you know, but uh, the win from medium or high, and I'm going to say use medium here uh, for the setting in regards to when those fog particles show up is definitely worth it in spite of the visual degradation from it. uh, Just because this game's so heavy when that happens. So I would recommend medium here in spite of that. Yeah. I'd really like it if those settings could be decoupled because they don't really I mean, to most gamers, they wouldn't really have an intuitive link there. And I think they'd want to be able to change those settings differently because it, you know, visual effects doesn't have that much of an effect, <laughs> no pun intended, in the general <laughs> game, but it has a big effect in that opening scene and perhaps some other scenes throughout the game. I actually took a little bit of a crack at PS5 here because I was a little bit curious because I do really like those high end visual effects with the volumetrics. And it looks closest to high, which would also correspond with the lack of foliage animation for the trees on the PlayStation 5. So I suspect that it's probably using that setting or perhaps a custom setting close to it, but probably that setting. Yeah, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. And also, you know, as we saw back then, the intro to the game was supremely heavy also on PS5. So I think they they, they made a a good choice there uh, in regards to what they were doing. Hair quality is the next setting. It technically will win less than the previous setting I was talking about, visual effects, but here in this, you know, this nice side-by-side lineup of the various settings, it starts to really degrade on the low setting, which I do not recommend. Um, But uh, at around high, there was an appreciable performance increase uh, that was measured as 12% in this one scene here. And I honestly am having a hard time seeing the difference. So it must be a smaller sub-pixel detail that is not showing so well. Uh, This is a setting, though, where if you're going through the benchmark, you'd be troubled to even notice uh, the difference uh, in visual quality and or performance because the hair uh, quality setting mainly affects characters that use a dynamic, like moving subsurface scattered hair that the game applies to certain uh, certain bosses usually, and the the benchmark won't tell you much about that. So definitely use the high setting here. Uh, you're going to appreciate it because, as we saw in the PS5 version, when you get close to a lot of these bosses, they get really heavy all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. The frame rate starts to lurch because they have a ton of effects associated with them, and they get more detailed the closer you are. And this will help you in those boss moments to get a better frame rate. Yeah, I think that's totally true. And like these shots are great, but I also kind of wonder how they would look. Obviously, you couldn't match this, but getting a face full of this guy, you know, it really <laughs> does dramatically tank the frame rate on PlayStation 5 across all the modes, basically, that I saw. It's pretty, pretty nasty. It's actually the probably the biggest performance drop that I saw in my hours with the game. But I think one aspect of this, this is sort of interesting to me, having a little bit of experience here with different versions of the game, is how DLSS is cleaning up that fur rendering. Because it's not doing an amazing job, but it's doing a lot better than FSR. And actually, I took a look at TSR after we recorded our PlayStation 5 piece. And on PC, it actually is not doing a very good job with this hair either. So in this case, that PC settings uh, really boost here that you're looking for, I think, is to combine any of the settings medium or above with DLSS because it's doing a way better job or maybe XCSS it's doing a way better job than those non-machine learning based techniques yeah this is is a case here where I think FSR is always has trouble with things I care but TSR can be pretty good but were you seeing like a vintage of Unreal Engine here that's it seems to be version 5.0 from from what you can see from inspecting the AXE also just some other quality aspects here where TSR did improve quality over time so that's something we're not getting in this title, apparently. Um, another thing to mention about hair quality, just kind of out there, is that uh, this is a, a setting that requires restarts for differences to show, mm-hmm. and as a result, performance to show differences. So this is one of the few in the game that does require a restart, along with full RT. Um, reflections quality. Now, the game appears to be using SDF reflections, and here, when you go from cinematic to very high, you really won't be seeing a difference. Uh, That doesn't seem to be actually doing much, but from very high to high, there is a 7% performance uplift, but there's then an introduced instability into reflections out of screen space. Uh, You're just gonna see SSR otherwise, but out of screen space, you'll start seeing this jiggling uh, that's being shown off here. Now, the 
improvement to reflection quality uh, and the difference that this setting will have, it's going to really depend how much water you tend to see on screen. And so this is a little bit more situational of a, of a performance upgrade. Uh, as a result of that, I think if you have a better GPU, something like RTX 3070 tier or higher, I think the very high setting is reasonable. But as we'll show off later with some other footage, I think if you have something like RTX 4060, 3060, um, RTX 2070 Super-ish level, then the high setting is actually what you want here. For GI quality, now I think the game's using Lumen uh, Diffuse GI, but uh, the whole point is when you go down from cinematic to very high, there's an appreciable 9% performance uplift for almost no visual difference. Now, when you go down to high, that's when it looks like the SSGI layer seems to call, as well as the detail of larger scale stuff changes. Uh, so you're gonna see maybe a little bit more light leak, it looks like. Uh, here, I think once again, if you have a bigger GPU, the very high setting, so I'm like saying RTX 3070 or better, then the very high setting is reasonable. But if you have something lower, 2070 Super, 4060, etc., 3060, then take a look at that high setting. So yeah, those are all the settings, the reasonable ones. And in the end, putting, using this footage from Muhammad here, of the cinematic set, you know, quality without full right. RT on versus the optimized settings using the very high for GI and reflections, there is a huge 48% win in this shot here. And this isn't even showing water, where if there was water, it would be arguably more. And I think if you look at these, other than some foliage density differences, you'd be struggling to tell the difference, I, I would say. Uh, and so I think these are very good optimized settings um, for this class of GPU. I do like the fact they have the cinematic settings preset, which like you said, is not usually exposed. I kind of like that they have it in the game, but at the same time, I kind of feel like players might be getting a little bit of a different impression of what's realistic or what is reasonable because people are just so used to maxing out their games here. Right. Um, but yeah, I think these optimized settings look visually very, very, very similar. And obviously the performance uplift is gigantic. Yeah, it's huge. And just talking really briefly about the settings there, I think the settings menu is pretty bare and I would love to see some preview images at least, but you can at least commend them for offering settings that scale the game visually in a way that I think works really well. Uh, some Sometimes settings in games don't scale well and you're just kind of left with bad performance in some way or settings that go too far uh, quite often. And this year, I feel like there's a good way to get a healthy balance essentially going down to high for a lot of things, uh, while also still getting a good looking game. So I think you've done a little bit more testing recently with a more hands-on look at the game actually running in more typical play on a mid-range PC system. So you might have some more well-optimized settings for PC gamers. Yeah, essentially uh, I did try out the settings using the very high GI and very high reflections. Uh, initially 1080p, uh, DLSS in the 68% or quality mode as it would usually be uh, there, uh, as I said, 1080p output, RTX 2070 Super. And I noticed initially that uh, the intro sequence is just so demanding when any of this, even at the, with the medium uh, uh, f kind of fog visual effects setting there, it's still so heavy, the, especially the cinematics when they come up. There's just, it's, I don't think this, intro sequence is a good way to judge your performance for the rest of the game. Getting into the rest of the game though, I did kind of find that uh, using the very high quality setting for GI and reflections on something that was RTX 2070 super tier uh, was just, I think it was like just too often in the 50s, maybe upper 40s for my liking at times, just that's the way it was. And dropping those other settings, those GI and those reflection settings down to high, put it right at the 60 hertz, 60 hertz line with V-Sync. And so I was much happier with that. And that's kind of the little takeaway I had initially with uh, Muhammad's settings there. I was thinking very high would be great uh, for most GPUs out there, but I think the lower tier, that's why I came up with this lower tier idea, two tiered settings, uh, mainly from just playing the game on an RTX 2070 Super and really appreciating it. So now that we've taken a, a detailed look at the settings of the game and come up with some good optimized settings, I think we should take a look at what Alex 
probably considers to be one of the major banes of Unreal Engine, which is Traversal Stutter. This is already mm -hmm. not that great on high-end PCs, especially using the higher-end uh, ray tracing settings, or on PS5s for that matter, as it's one Unreal Engine issue that does extend to the consoles as well. Mm -hmm. But how is a traversal stutter on a genuinely lower-end PC processor, maybe like the console-mimicking Ryzen 5 3600 Zen 2 processor that we often use for mid-range PC comparisons? Okay. So here, um, when just running around on an RTX 2070 Super using the lower end version of those settings I've made, so high for RTGI and high for reflections, uh, the game is going to be primarily going to be, it's going to be hitting around a locked 60 FPS in the opening chapter uh, with just a few GPU related dips here and there down to like 57 FPS or so. Uh, but when you run around with that like VSync engage, and I'm showing that just for visual clarity, purposes, you'll see that when you do hit a traversal stutter moment, it is usually around 66 milliseconds uh, where it can see a 66 millisecond drop and sometimes there's like a 33 millisecond one right next to it. It depends uh, essentially and the whole point there is to kind of show off that it's going to be not great but arguably as I showed off in my previous video uh, with the game running with full RT, that is actually kind of like a worse situation there. Uh, so without um, using the full RT setting, even on a mid-range PC, it's it's noticeable, but it is not like within the realm of like 150 milliseconds or higher, like I thought it might be. I thought it'd be way worse actually. <laughs> uh, so I was gen I was a little bit shocked about that. Um, it's okay. It could be better. Now, what about shader compilation? Because I know the game does have a lengthy shader precompile, but I guess in this case, does it actually catch everything? That's the question, because in Unreal Engine, it's actually sort of a challenge to precompile certain types of shaders. So does that pose an issue in Wukong, I guess is the question. Yeah, so when I did my initial video on the RTX 4090 high-end CPU, Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, uh, while playing the game, without just constantly replaying each section and deleting my drivers and all these other things, uh, I wanted to make sure I was getting the game, the video out in time talking about stuff. And there, it was hard to appreciate the difference between some traversal stutters, like in the video I say, sometimes they're happening and I'm not sure why. And going back to that, when I look at that, I think I was seeing some shader compilation stutter in specific areas. And that was more visible on the Ryzen 5 3600 due to the size of them being larger than what I would describe as the traversal stutters, like I said earlier, was like 66 milliseconds, usually when it would occur. But these would be in the realm of like over a hundred. And they would be they would coincide with specific events so I could more easily discern them then because with the larger CPUs, it'll kind of, how does, I don't know what the English word is. It'll like nivellate them. It'll make them, <laughs> more more close to one another uh like in terms of size so it's hard to say like that is coming from that certain thing basically you need more data to come to better conclusions and my better conclusion here is that the game does suffer in spite of on the Ryzen 5 3600, I was waiting about seven minutes, so two times the length almost of what I waited right. for on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. So it was crunching a lot of shaders, and it seems to be getting a lot of them, but when there would be a new certain particle effect, and it seemed to be only attached to particle effects. For example, the first time uh, Wukong, uh, in this footage here, uh, moves and he does a perfect dodge that doubles the character for a split second, that's an effect. That doubling of the eff character effect brings up a big stutter then another time um when i'm getting shot at by this character shooting arrows at me the first arrow that he lets loose there's a stutter associated with it and then when wukong gets hit by the arrow there's another stutter associated with there and i think these are actually shader compilation stutters um and i'm going to double confirm that but i'm going to be right about it <laughs> uh, but i will double confirm it just in case uh and this then you'll see this video and you'll be like yeah he double confirmed it uh but yeah Basically, I think that shader compilation sequence in the beginning, it is doing a good job for a lot of stuff, but it's missing certain effects 
specific effects. And from my memory of talking with people who worked at Epic and people behind the scenes, I think it was only until version uh, 5.1 or 5.2 of Unreal Engine that the pre-compilation system built into Unreal Engine for shaders on PC didn't, it didn't include Niagara Particles. And as a result of that, I actually do think that we're seeing some sort of issue that is from them using an older version of the engine. In spite of them probably thinking they're getting everything by using the tool that's provided. Uh, so in this case here, I kind of want to add an addendum to my last video where shader compilation is okay, but it's missing some key stuff that I really think they should look at fixing. And uh, there's a variety of ways to fix that. Obviously, integrating later versions of Unreal would fix this uh, just per default with them doing more shader caching runs. Or, uh, for example, uh, Ascent, uh, the people who made the Ascent, uh, I forget the name of their studio. Um, they essentially, while they were doing loading screens, they would render their particle effects on an off-screen buffer. And that would, while you're loading, be rendering them and preventing shader compilation just in time during gameplay. So there's ways to fix this, but I think that's actually what I'm seeing here. And it's good that I can diagnose it now. Uh, but yeah, so shader compilation is not as good actually as I thought it was based upon my first experience with the game. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad, but that does happen a lot with Unreal Engine titles. And like you said, this is probably a 5.0 title, which is a little weird. Like I saw some commentary from people on the internet that was a little bit interesting because like they've gone to all this effort to port those high-end NVIDIA ray tracing features into this title, but not at a commensurate amount of effort to maybe move to more advanced versions of Unreal Engine that would seemingly clean up some of the issues we're seeing with this game. I think it's a little bit curious, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, this game has been in development for a while. It started on UE4, and I know integrations of later versions of Unreal can mess up stuff if you're doing a lot right. of branched off work. And that it's a little bit of a shame, like with regards to shader compilation, with regards to, um, for example, the game using cascaded shadow maps, the quality of TSR, as you discussed. These are some things with later versions of Unreal that we know are performant and or better quality. Uh, so right. it is a bit of a shame that we're stuck in this kind of no man's land, original Unreal territory here, apparently, based upon the information we know. Apparently. Okay, well, Alex, I think that was a really enlightening an informative discussion of how the PC version scales. And obviously you provided a lot of additional information and context to append to our first two videos in this game. Um, personally, I am a bit of an ignoramus in that virtually every PC game I play, I just ramp settings to the maximum. I'm not a very <laughs> diligent person when it comes to my own personal PC gaming, which is probably helped by the fact that I have a relatively high-end system. But I think you sketched out a really effective way to optimize the game for lower-end systems and also maybe an alternative path for consoles in the future, like maybe the PS5, because I think we're not too happy with the performance there in that game and the kind of configuration issues that we see with that particular title on that console. Right, and based on my play here, Oliver, uh, as a small little conclusion here, I do think a different style 60 FPS mode might be possible on console. Ryzen 5 3600 didn't seem to be my big issue in frame rate here. It seemed to be more, much more GPU limited than I thought it would be. Uh, so that's the way it looks. Yeah, certainly based on the fact that they're resorting to frame gen for 60 FPS, I sort of just assumed the absolute worst, but apparently yeah. that's not the case. So I think ultimately kind of wrapping up our initial barrage of coverage on Black Myth Wukong, our initial three video salvo <laughs> that me and Alex have <laughs> put together over the past uh, few days, including that video yesterday, which wow. I think I finished in 36 hours, which is a record for, <laughs> Holy for a digital foundry. I just <laughs> marathoned that one. I think the Woo. game obviously still has some major problems that should be addressed from traversal stutter to shader comp, as you've pointed out, to configuration quirks all over the place on PC and also the game's frankly enormous number of kind of back-breaking configuration issues on ps5 which are unlike frankly any game i've ever taken a look at for digital foundry probably unlike any game i've ever seen before it's very very bizarre but until some of those issues are addressed i think we have wrapped up our initial coverage of the game to some significant degree here on black myth wukong so thank you for joining me alex battaglia thank you oliver this was an awesome discussion and as you see i've ascended again uh, I'm wearing my tiara, so we're good to go. 
Yes, and to actually say goodbye in Mandarin Chinese, Alex, Zai Chen. Zai Chen. <laughs>